Hi. In this screencast, what I want to do is talk about conversion, obversion, and contraposition. Now, a lot of this can get confusing because some of the reason we're doing this is to set up some things we'll be doing in Chapter 5, where we're going to be looking at more than one type of um, categorical statement, and we're going to need to make sure that some of our terms line up. And part of the problem is, in some cases, we have terms that are regular terms, you know, dogs, and then we have non-dogs. And we can do one thing with that, which is to make dogs D and non-dogs N, but there seems to be a relationship between dogs and non-dogs, or, or maybe it would make more sense to say light things and heavy things, where they are, you know, the opposite of each other. And so we can do more with those kinds of terms in a syllogism if we could perform operations to get rid of the nons. And so that's why we're doing this. So basically, one of the things that we've already learned how to do is turn false statements into true ones. And that we've learned how to do using the square of opposition, particularly the modern square of opposition. So we know that, for example, if we have an uh, A statement that's false, we follow the diagonal to get to a true O statement. Or if we have an E statement that's true, we follow the diagonal to get to a false I statement. Now, what we need to do is learn how to turn terms into their opposite. And so the opposite of a term is going to be called the term complement. So a term complement is just the opposite. So light objects, heavy objects, theists, atheists, dogs, non-dogs. Now, I know some of you are going to say, well, you know, there's a, an in-between. You know, uh, the, there might be a medium weighted object, or there, there are agnostics that are somewhere between theists and atheists. But let's assume now we're talking about terms where something is either that or something else. So in our notation, a term will be represented by a letter, and its complement or its opposite will be represented by non followed by the letter. So um, let's assume that someone is either a theist or an atheist. Um, a theist might be T. Um, atheist would be non-T. So, you know, here's some examples. Uh, light objects are L, heavy objects, non-L. Theists, T, atheists, non-T, dogs, D, non-dogs, non-D, etc. And they can be reversed. I mean, there's no reason light objects has to be L. Um, heavy objects could be H, and light objects could be non-H. It doesn't matter, okay? The point is that um, the, the relationship between a letter and non followed by the letter is uh, completely opposite. Now, basically, what we're trying to do is reduce terms. And reducing terms means we want to get rid of the nons. Okay? So every time we look at a statement with a non in it, we want to figure out how to get rid of that. And there are basically three different operations that we can use to do this. We don't always do all three. Actually, we never do all three. Sometimes we do two, but you, sometimes we can just do one to get rid of the nons. It depends on where the non is. And I'll show you a chart at the end that will explain this. And also, a version will work for all statements, but conversion and contraposition don't. So in some cases, you simply cannot use that operation. And when we're looking at arguments, if you see something like an A statement, which cannot be used with conversion, um, and the conclusion, you know, if you have all A or B, the conclusion is all B or A, it's going to be invalid because conversion can't be used with an A statement. However, if you have uh, no B or A, and the conclusion is all A or B, that's conversion, and that would be valid but I'm getting ahead of myself, I know. So here, let's start with conversion. Conversion only works for E and I statements. And with conversion, you switch the subject to the predicate. So no A or B, no dogs are, are cats, is the same as no cats are dogs. Some A or B, some dogs are poodles, is the same thing as some poodles are dogs. Okay. Now, that's not going to work for an A statement or no statement. For example, um, all dogs are mammals is not the same as all mammals are dogs. Okay? Um, some dogs are not poodles is not the same thing as some poodles are not dogs. So the point is that conversion, you switch the subject to the predicate, it'll work for an E statement, it will work for an I statement, it will not work for an A or an O. Okay? Obversion, I'm going to have to try and move the screen a little bit so this is always the fun part of the video, we change the quality, okay? Um, the quality is um, affirmative and negative. So all becomes no, some becomes some or not, some or not becomes some, um, no becomes all. 
and we change the predicate to its term complement or opposite. Now, the nice thing about a version is that it works on all statements. Okay, so if we have this is the part where it gets to be a little bit tricky. I got to figure. Ah, here we go. So coming down. Here we go. If we have all A or B, the obverse is no A or non B. If we have no A or B, the obverse is all A or non B. Um, and the last two seem a little bit intuitive, but just go with me on this. Uh, some A or B is some A or not non B, and some A or not B uh, becomes some A or non B. Now. You're looking at this and thinking, why am I turning this into non when I'm trying to get rid of nons? Well, in fact, what we're trying to do is go the opposite way. So if you have no A or non B, you can turn it to all A or B. All right, And that's what's nice about a version here, is that it can be used for all of these um, different statements, and it can be used to get rid of the nons. All right, the last operation is contraposition. And whereas um, conversion worked for E and I, Contraposition is only going to work for A and O statements. And with A and O statements, what you can do is you can switch the subject and predicate, and you turn both to their turn complement. So going down, we see that all A or B becomes all non B or non A. Some A or not B becomes some non B or not non A. Okay, so with contraposition, we're not worried about the quality, quantity, anything like that. All we're doing is switching the subject and predicate and turning both to their opposite. Again, we're, we're going the other way, so what we're really trying to do is get rid of the nons. So if we have all non B or non A, we want to turn it to all A or B. Okay, again, it does not work for E, e or I statements. So if I say, um, you know, no dogs or cats, it's not the same as saying all non-dogs are non-cats, as you can tell, because there are a lot of non-dogs that are also uh, um, not non-cats, uh, if you think about it. And don't think about it too hard. Maybe just take my word for that. All right, so that's how contraposition works. Now, what I want to do is explain why a little bit about why we're doing this. I mean, first of all, let's look at um, the idea of an immediate inference. An immediate inference is going from one statement to another, or one premise to a conclusion. And in Boolean logic, the argument is valid if the premise and the conclusion say the same thing. Now, in Aristotelian logic, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, but in Boolean logic, um, the argument is valid if the premise and conclusion say the same thing. So let's look at this example. All insured people are people with good medical coverage. Therefore, all people with bad medical coverage are uninsured people. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to change this. So we've got the premise is all IRG, okay? Insured people, people with good medical coverage. The conclusion is all non-G or non-I, people with bad medical coverage and non-insured people. Now, What's the relationship between the two? Well, the subject and predicate are switched, and um, both terms are turned to their term complement, so it's contraposition. Since it's an A statement and contraposition is being used, the argument is valid. Okay? If it had been no I or G, therefore no non-G or non-I, it would have been invalid. Now, I'm not going to have you worry about the names of the fallacies, but um, basically, if an argument is or a, a per particular operation is performed incorrectly, you just put illicit in front of it. So the fallacy would be illicit contraposition. But again, we're not going to worry about the names of the fallacies in this particular section. Okay, And so we can check it using Venn diagrams by the method um, that I showed you uh, in the, the section on Venn diagrams. The premise is that the area that is I but not G has no membership. And so we're going to shade the area that is I but not G, which is shaded in this particular one. Conclusion. Um, all non-G or non-I just means that the area that is not G but I has no membership. And so we see the conclusion here. All right. Therefore, um, the premise and the conclusion are exactly the same, and so it's valid. Okay. So again, you know, what we could do then is use this to judge um, the uh, truth of one statement based on another. Now, 
the other way we're going to use this is to get rid of nons. Okay, we're going to be looking at a syllogism, and one statement's going to have a term, the other statement's going to ha not have a term. And when I get to chapter 5, I believe it's 5.4, I have a video on how to do that. But let me give you a chart that's going to help with this. All right, so we see the non, and we have to get rid of the non. First of all, let's look at the location of the non. If it's in the subject, and if it's an A or O statement, we really can't do anything with it. All right. What it means is that we're going to either have to rewrite the statement so that the non is in the other statement. So if, in other words, if it's heavy um, and non-heavy, you might want to change it to light and non-light and do the opposite. Or we just leave it the way it is and it's going to be invalid. With an E and I statement, we'll use conversion to get the non into the predicate. Okay, so we're setting it up to get rid of the non. If the non is in the predicate, we can always use a version. Okay, and with a version, we change the quality. All to no, no to all, some are to some are not, some are not to some are, and then we just change the, the um, predicate to its opposite, and so we just get rid of the non in the predicate, and then we're good to go. If the non is in the subject and predicate, we use contraposition. We just switch the terms and get rid of the nons. Um, otherwise, with an E or I statement, we just can't do anything with that. So. That, in a nutshell, is obversion, conversion, and contraposition. And hopefully this explains also where you're going to be using them. When we look at syllogisms, where we're going to be, deal be dealing with three different statements, um, we'll see how we can use obversion, contraposition, and conversion as a means of um, analyzing syllogisms.